Coming up next on America's Voice, some say generations are defined by the times in which they grew up. The 60s generation was definitely shaped by the social revolution of the times. Gen Xers, however, may be shaped by technology instead, but are the generations headed for conflict? At issue today, generational identity. Are you a boomer, a joneser, an X, or a Y? Get ready. Take Action Now begins right now. Live from Washington, D.C., this is Take Action Now. And hello and welcome from your nation's capital. I'm Bill Horman. You know, back in the day, the smart sociologists came up with that term, baby boomer. A baby boomer was somebody born during that incredible birth rate jump just after the Second World War. It didn't subside for another 20 years. But then boomers spawned Generation X. And now their baby brothers and sisters need an identity, so we call them Gen Y. But another hot new generation has been identified. Born during the first world of born during the first post-war boom of the Second World War, we now call them Generation Jones. But exactly what is this Generation Jones? Well, it's been identified as a group born between the years 1954 and 1965, which means if you're aged 35 to 46, you're a Joneser. Or roughly 25% of us are Jonesers. But what identifies a Joneser culturally? Well, Jonathan Pontel can tell us about that because he's come up with the term Generation Jones. He also has a website dedicated to the notion that baby boomers can be divided into subset generations. But we want to know what you think. Does your generation have a different identity, a different perspective, and does that lead to generational con competition? one eight seven seven am voice is the telephone number. We start our con conversation with Jonathan Pontel. You think I just ran, ran in here from the protests uh, out on the mall. Jonathan, welcome to your nation's capital. My pleasure to be here. Generation Jones, <laughs> isn't it enough to have baby boomers and let it go at that? <laughs> but we're not boomers. I mean, the funny thing is that it's been so obvious to people our age that we're not baby boomers. I mean, we, you know, yet we got lumped in with the baby boomers simply because of a birth chart, despite mm -hmm. the fact that no generation in American history has ever been a, a, based on birth rates before or since. I mean, generational personalities come from shared formative experiences, not headcounts. We're not boomers. Now, did you get the sense that folks born in the late 50s and early 60s were sort of wandering around aimlessly? Where do I belong? <laughs> right. What led you to, to, to identify that group? Yeah, I, I don't know that uh, our generation has spent sleepless nights obsessing about the fact <laughs> that uh, we've been mislabeled. We're just very, very unslept we've spent so many sleepless nights. No, you know, obviously people's lives go on. This is one part of, of a, a complicated mosaic that is our lives. Uh -huh. but, but it does seem to matter to people. I mean, I, I've been babbling on a lot of TV and radio shows about this, and the call-ins are pretty amazing. You know, the, the, the uh, email responses, that sort of thing. It does seem to matter to a lot of people. And, you know, I think it's partly because we humans like to affiliate with something larger than ourselves. You know, we want to be part of a page in a history book. But I think more importantly, you know, there are specific ways in which not having a generational identity affects us adversely. For example, politically, typically our interests have gotten lost in the shuffle because we haven't had that sense of conscious that, that that sense of of generational consciousness about us. And when you ask people, for example, about the issue of uh, social security, mm -hmm. you know. People our age, when asked about that, say, we're not going to get it. We never get it. The boomers always get the good stuff. And I mean, it, that happens at every point in the life cycle. The boomers get the good stuff. And we're just as we get to the party, there's a few scraps being thrown our way. But I mean, and so people think the same thing with Social Security. By having a generational identity and by getting presidential candidates to talk to us, which they've been doing specifically to Generation Jones the last couple of months, we're likely to get our interests looked at. Well, I thought this was interesting. Saw this article in the Washington Post last Thursday. A gentleman named Greg Siegel wrote this. He said, I'm more closely related to boomers than Gen X. After all, I recall watching black and white TV, not DVD players. I know how to ski, not snowboard. And I remember how to do the electric slide, not the Macarena. He concludes, I'm too young to remember Ronald Reagan as an actor, but I'm old enough to have played eight-track cassettes. He's... He's the quintessential Joneser. He's 35 years old, but he's right there in the middle, doesn't know with whom to identify. Tell us, what makes up the personality of a Generation Joneser? Right, and actually this guy, Greg Siegel, wrote that article, sent it into the Post, and one of the editors knew about Generation Jones and had him write a Generation Jones piece, which was on the same page. I don't know if you caught that. No, didn't. Didn't catch that. No. Ah, you gotta, Missed the, missed the important thing there. Uh, <laughs> no, there's, yeah, there's, a, there's an article on the same page about the Generation Jones. The personality of the Joneser. Yeah. 
Uh, Generation Jones, oh, you mean answer your question. Yes, okay. exactly, yes. please. <laughs> right. um, yeah, I mean, obviously a lot of things make up a generational personality, and of course there's a zillion individual differences here. I mean, sometimes people say, well, I'm not like that. Well, I'm only saying in broad strokes this is what people are like. Among those differences, there's this jonesing quality to this generation. For viewers that don't know what jonesing is, it's that, uh, that craving or yearning, like uh, Back in the early 70s, our generation, following the success of the two big hit hit songs, Love Jones and Basketball Jones, made the, the slang word Jones a popular word among so us teens. So it's a yearning. It, the That's the right. yearning generation That's is right. what Generation Jones means. But, but are, beyond, they, uh, go on. are they forged of the Cold War era, 55 to say 65? Is that their main Id identical personality? Well, we were, we were born 54 to 65. Mm -hmm. Of course, we were influenced more as children in the 60s and teens in the 70s. And so like with that Jones in college, which I think is, is one of the fundamental qualities, personality characteristics of this generation, given huge expectations in the 60s, really during the arguably the height of post-World War II American confidence, and then confronted with a dramatically different reality in the 70s. Mm -hmm. And I think it left our generation, it's not just theoretical, and there's a great deal of statistical data to support this, left our generation with an underlying pending unrequited Jones and quality. Well, you know, I'm start, starting to get a little bit of the jealousy factor from, you know, boy, those Gen Xers, they've got, and the Gen Y's coming, they've got it so good thanks to this new technology. Right. We're going to talk more about Generation Jones. We want you involved in this conversation, one eight seven seven am voice We're going to speak about the differences between the generations. And speaking of differences, a couple tourists told us what they think helps divide the generations. We had gasoline prices that were only a quarter a gallon, <laughs> something that generations don't have now. I would say the really the lack of morality, um, probably the openness and some of the lifestyles probably. We just had a more protected, more reserved um, society. Uh, we made our own enjoyment, and fun, games. Today, the youngsters can't do that. Television has spoiled it, spoiled the art of conversation. It's a new age. It's a, it's a computer age. It's a fast age. It's the age of going into space. Well, things definitely changed from generation to generation. We're wondering if there's going to be some sort of conflict between the generations. Uh, inspired by our guest today, Jonathan Pontel, he's identified what he calls Generation Jones. We're going to talk to another radio show guest in just a second, but first let's go up to Capitol Hill, talk to a tourist, get the tax perspective. Hey, Tac. How you doing? What do you think of this generational stuff? You're 31 years old, right? Right. So you're a Gen Xer. Uh, yeah, I am a Gen Xer. D does it mean anything to you to be called Gen X? What is a Gen Xer to you? Uh, it seems it seems pretty uh, vague to me. I, I mean, I think what the only thing that makes Generation X all one is that we are there is nothing that makes us all one. I guess we're just. I think that's what makes the Generation X is that there is nothing that unifies us. There's, yeah. So you there's feel no Vietnam War. There's no. There's nothing that brings us together as one. So. You feel disaffected too, just like I guess all youthful generations do as they're coming up. Tacken from Michigan, thank you very much. Well, let's talk to uh, Jeff Santos. He's the radio show host of a program called Born in the 60s. Jeff, you there? How are you? I'm doing well. You're in Boston, right? That's right. Um, what's your take on this generational stuff? I don't know if you've met Jonathan Pontel, but he has uh, identified the group Generation Jones, those born between 1954 and 1965. That's right up your alley. What well, it sure is. It's, uh, it's half of the born in the 60s uh, demographic, and uh, I understand where he's coming from. I was born in 63 and can identify somewhat with baby boomer personalities and baby boomer perspectives, um, uh, you know, even what aspects the Vietnam War had. I think, though, that those who were born in the 60s, whether you were born in 69 or 63, you were born in a time period, and the first three years of anybody's life is very important, and it, it has a significant impact on you. Most psychologists would tell you that. And I believe that whether you were born at the time of JFK's assassination in 63, as I was, or if you were born in 68 when King was shot in the height of Vietnam, or Woodstock in 69, or even if you count it from 61 to 70, uh, during the, uh, the violent times of the uprisings at Kent State, all of it was very turbulent. I think that aspect has a huge influence on those who were born in the 60s, half of Generation Jones and the other half of Generation X. And it's basically one combined with turbulence, uh, combined with a lot of chaos, growing up and having to do it on your own because there really wasn't a 
claim laid out as it was for baby boomers who were born in the 40s and had an easier time of it until, of course, they went to war. Uh, do you get a lot of phone calls from people who are roughly 35 to 45 years old and they're trying to find what their identity is, where they fit in the fabric of our society? Well, I think so. I think a lot of them have made a decision, for instance, to do a little more of an alternative setting. I have a, I have a regular caller from uh, uh, Marion, Indiana, who is a... Um, he works at home, has his kid, has his kid homeschooled, um, is uh, self-employed, and made a decision a number of years ago to go that route because he had older brothers, boomers, uh, who didn't really enjoy their work uh, lifestyle and so forth. So he decided to take an alternative route. And I think many people uh, look at the at the choices that were available to them, those who again were born in the '60s, and said, "Well, let's like let's take a look at different." different opportunities. You see a lot of entrepreneurs, a lot of people have gone on to do a lot of dot-com uh, ownership and so forth. And I think that, if anything, represents the idea that there's so much chaos, again, so much change. Let me go out and find my own way. Jeff Santos, radio host of the program Born in the 60s, thank you so much for joining us. You've added a lot to this discussion. Thank Jonathan you. Pontel, how do uh, the parents who are Generation Jonesers differently raise their children than they were raised as children. Right, and the vast majority of today's school kids are the offspring of Generation Jones. So every time there's a Columbine, you know, we're the ones getting blamed, despite the fact that, you know, parents these days obviously are so completely busy taking care of their school kids, their aging parents, and working longer hours than Americans ever have. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, it, it's interesting. When we were kids uh, in the 60s, there, th we were really doted on by a culture that, I mean, there are books that came out at the time called The Child Worshippers with other, and other titles like that that reflected this sort of unprecedented outpouring of parental attention on children. So Jonesers are pampered? In the 60s. Then, in the 70s, it went the opposite direction. And, and what happened was the ascendance of laissez-faire parenting, mm -hmm. where parenting experts came out and said, hey, don't spend so much time with your children because then you, the parent, will later resent that and that'll be harmful to the relationship. one eight seven seven Voice is the telephone number. We want you involved in this. Are you a boomer, a Joneser, an X, or a Y? Uh, I, I think that's interesting then. The uh, Jonesers, are they good parents then? If they were sort of suffering through this conflict in the 60s and 70s on how they were raised, are we good parents? You know, it's, it's such a complicated issue, but generally speaking, I think most parenting experts these days would say this is a good crop of parents. I mean, therefore, in a number of different areas, this generation, which in some ways was really so sort of abandoned by mm -hmm. their parents in the 70s mm -hmm. at a time then when kids, because of all the confusing stuff that was going on, needed more parental and societal guidance than usual, all of a sudden we were getting less than usual. Well, some, so, some could say that perhaps economics has allowed them to be more hands-on, the economics of the 80s right. and the 90s. We'll come back yes. with our concluding segment on this. Back with more on Boomers, Jonesers, X and Y. But first, here's a look at the results from yesterday's question of the day. We wanted to know if you think the different generational perspectives will lead to competition between the generations. This is the way you voted. Look at this, 45% said, yeah, because we're all selfish. And 43% said, what's Jonathan talking about Generation Jones? Back in a minute. It's, it's easy to turn around and say, well, it's not like it was in my day, or it's, it's better now than it was. I think it's just progress. I think you have to be prepared to move on and, um, and sort of enjoy whatever happens to be around the corner and, and just keep moving forward. Yeah, the new generations, they keep coming up, and they're the engine, they're the momentum, the propeller that pushes us forward. We're talking about generational politics, but really more generational identity. The inspiration for all this, Jonathan Pontel, he's identified a new subset within the baby boom, which he calls Generation Jones. That's you and me, born between 1954 and 1965. I'm interested in this. There was a group in the early 90s called Lead or Leave. It was a group of 20-somethings. They were really focused on the deficit and so forth. And they, got, they had a little bit of success, a little bit of notoriety, but they really seemed to have an anti-elderly bent to them politically, if not personally. Kind of came at odds with the AARP. Lead or leave, they've disbanded. Is that the sort of generational warfare, competition, we're likely to see as we move on through the baby boomers as they retire? 
Right. I mean, I think, or just as a, a quick point I threw out, we're not, we're not actually a subset. We're, we're of the boomers. We're our own generation. I mean, we are. Actually, there's more of us than there are boomers. That's true. And, and I would argue, I mean, in writing my book, I, I, you know, it's a question I've gotten a lot. Are we more like boomers or more like Xers? I actually think we're more like Xers. So I, I don't see us as a subset of boomers. I don't have a tattoo. I don't wear an ear no, no, no. Don't and tell I, me that. Th th despite the, fa the black clad uh, outfit here today, I don't, I, I'm, there's not a tattoo to be found on me nor a piercing. But generally speaking, there's a lot of, uh, you know, there's similarities and difference to both generations, but I think generally we are more like X. Okay. I, can get, I can go on with that, but let me get back to your question. Yeah, please okay. do. Um, which was... Uh, Is, are we going to see oh, an increased right. competition right. between the two generations? And, and lead or leave, you know, just like uh, choose or lose and those, you know, they, they, MTV has not had a lot of success, despite the fact they put a lot of time and money, and it's admirable what they've done. And lead and leave wasn't directly MTV. But, you know, MTV has been probably the main group that's come out in terms of trying to get Gen X out there voting. Um, yeah, I do think that inevitably there are going to be some conflicts because generations sometimes are fighting for the same things mm -hmm. in a finite pie. And so on an issue, I brought up Social Security earlier, you know, it, the more that the other guy gets, the less I get. So sometimes you are going to have that kind of conflict. I personally don't think, though, that generational identities and generational consciousnesses have to be uh, dividing. I mean, I, I, in a lot of ways, they don't I think, have to be divisive. And I don't think so. Well, I think one reason perhaps they may not be is because of the internet. You know, you, you've got Gen X and Gen Y. They are all wired up. They know everything mm -hmm. about it. It's expanding the economy and the way we communicate and so forth. And perhaps we won't have the sorts of uh, arguments over a small pie because the pie will keep expanding. Well, that, and, and also, I mean, I think Generation Jones in some ways can be a uniting force in the sense that, you know, we're sort of like on this bridge, not to be overly metaphoric here, but we're <laughs> sort of on this bridge kind of overlooking Boomer and I, and we sort of understand each of their languages. You know, we can translate between Boom and X. Mm -hmm. But in some ways, we're sort of like middle children. And when you think of them between our older Boomer siblings and our younger Xer siblings, the, sort of the Jan Brady's, if you will, mm -hmm. uh, of American generations. Marsha, Marsha, Marsha. That, that's right. And, and you know, in, in a way, I mean, psychologists will tell you, I mean, middle children tend to be compromisers and unifiers and mediators. And, and in some ways, that really is our personality based on how we were raised. We are a mediating sort of generation. We've got just a couple of minutes, Jonathan. I want to zip through some of these. Help us identify what the entertainment values are to Generation Jones. Or, uh, what, what were sort of the entertainment icons to us? Well, I, we just were saying the Bradys. I mean, you know, hard to argue against uh, Marsha Brady, mm -hmm. who, by the way, is proud to be a Joneser and has uh, given me some support on all this. But, I mean, I think that's probably one of our main iconic uh, symbols is the Brady Bunch, although the Partridge family was so much cooler. So television, si television sitcoms of the late 60s and early 70s help sure, identify I mean, us. Yeah. What's our fashion? Is it clogs? Is it mini skirts? What's our fashion? Right. I mean, our fashion has, you know, gone through so many different cycles. I mean... In the 60s, well, in the 60s, we were just sort of just little children sort of wearing what mommy and daddy told us. But once we got into our own in the 70s, we really were the ones that adopted the long hair on guys and the, uh -huh. the, the pony, the, you know, uh, 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 bell bottoms and tie dye and all that. That was only a small part of the boomer generation, a big part of our generation. Then, of course, in the 80s, we were the ones that really, you know, the fringe of our generation were, was the two main fringes were rap and punk. And, you know, people think of that as Generation X. Really, mm -hmm. that started a long time ago, back in the mid-70s. We want to get another uh, viewer in on this discussion. I thought you were going to say we were responsible for the leisure suit. Here's Ruth from Pennsylvania. Hey, Ruth. Hi there. How are you? Ruth, uh, I don't want to ask your age, but you may very well be a Generation Jones, or if you were born between 54 and 65. Do you feel more comfortable now knowing you have a generational identity? Uh, actually, I'm a little older than that, so I was born in 46. So oh, so I'm, you're a boomer. I'm part of the boomers, yeah. <laughs> I yeah. like that identity. Do I really do. You, uh, real quickly, Ruth, do you feel in competition with any of the other generations for your piece of the social pie or your own di identity? Well, I worry a little bit about things like Social Security as I hit closer to retirement age, and I wonder if there'll be enough there for me and for my family. I'm also a social worker, so I care a lot about these issues. So I'm really looking for a better plan so that people don't have to worry so much about their futures. Excellent, Ruth. Thank you very much for your comment. No doubt the generations will be batting around these political issues. I would have sworn she was a Generation Jones. Or looking good, Looking Ruth. good, wow. yeah. Ten Jonathan years. Pontel, the identifier of Generation Jones. You've been a great guest. We'll have you on later in the summer after your book comes out. More right after this. Stay tuned. Just want to tell you that Jeff Santos, the radio guest we had, his program can be heard on the Talk American Network between 11 
and 1 a.m. Eastern Time. Check it out. It's a, it's a fun time. Here's Angela from Wisconsin on the phone line. You're it, Angela. Hi. Hi. I just wanted to make the comment that sometimes I get so disgusted. I'm, I'm 41 years old, and I think a better name for our generation is Generation Jerk. <laughs> I really do. We are the most narcissistic, nauseating generation. Uh, women come to me and they say, how come your kids are so nice and they're so polite? Well, I stayed home with them and I taught them. I didn't turn them into the hands of, you know, all kinds of people to raise my kids. Angela from Wisconsin, a member of what she terms Jonathan Pontel, Generation Jerk. We've been talking about generational identity. I take no responsibility for that. Angela gets our last word. That's all the time we have for this edition of Take Action Now. Coming up tonight at 7 o'clock, it's going global. At 8 o'clock, another edition of Take Action Now. Tomorrow, we're going to talk about the IMF and the World Bank. Should we get out of that or what? See you Wednesday.